In late 1983, I was eight years old and lived in Aurora, Colorado, a suburb southeast of Denver, Colorado. We lived in a brand new subdivision, and I loved it. Our house was busy. I had three older sisters, an older brother, and my grandma and mom living with me in our house at the time. Our house was ranch style. My 10-year-old sister and I shared a bedroom on the main floor. I loved this room. My twin bed was pushed up against the wall that had a window that faced into our backyard. I liked to push the curtains aside at night and perch my elbows on the windowsill and look outside. The window was elevated, but not so high that I couldn't see into the yard easily. My older sister shared the room next to us, and my grandmother was in a large room across a small hallway from us. My mother had a finished bedroom all the way downstairs in the basement, and my brother had the rest of the basement. He was 16 years old at the time, and had a lot of friends that were always coming and going. I remember our house always being full of guests. We had a really cold spell hit us that week. It was super icy outside, and my sister and I had been playing in the backyard. We had these circular snow sleds that we would stand on and glide across the slick parts of the grass. We weren't good at putting our outdoor toys away, and had left them strewn across the lawn. That night, Something woke me up out of a sound sleep. I thought about getting up and going downstairs to sleep with my mom. Then I heard a noise outside my window. It sounded like someone was slowly walking across the snow in the backyard. I could hear the frozen grass crunching under their feet. I then heard someone say, crap, and something clink. I perched up out of my bed and moved my curtain aside to look outside the window. I think I originally thought I would see my brother or one of his friends out there. He often came in late at night, past curfew, and usually snuck through the backyard into an open basement window. I remember thinking that he shouldn't be doing this on a school night, and I was going to tell my mom in the morning that he woke me up. It wasn't my brother. I saw a young man, probably in his early 20s, that I didn't recognize. I made eye contact with him and then quickly scanned the rest of the yard for my brother. I didn't see him anywhere. I was going to move away from the window, but the man's eyes were glued to mine, and he started walking towards my gaze. I froze. I couldn't move. He came as close as he could to the glass and smiled at me. It was an eerie smile. The kind of smile you make when you're caught doing something you shouldn't be doing. I remember him having crystal blue eyes. Almost gray. Something about his expression wasn't right, and it took me a few seconds to realize I was feeling fear. He was not a friend of my brother's, nor supposed to be in our yard at that time of night. I panicked and jumped off my bed and quickly ran downstairs to tell my mom. Once I got to the basement, I saw my brother was sound asleep in his bed as well. This scared me more, as I knew now for sure that this man in our yard was most likely not a friend of my brother's. My mom calmed me down came upstairs and turned the lights on outside and looked into the yard from the sliding glass door windows. She didn't see anyone. I remember her not making a big deal out of it, and I ended up sleeping in the basement bedroom with her the rest of the night. I didn't sleep well. I wondered why that man was in our yard and where he went. I even remember feeling scared he might come back. I don't know the exact timeline, but I'm guessing it was a few weeks later that a family a few streets over from us were murdered in the middle of the night by an intruder with a hammer and a knife. The father, mother, and seven-year-old daughter were killed, and a three-year-old daughter was left for dead, but miraculously survived. This crime sent our entire community over the edge. The police did not seem to know who had done this horrible thing, or why. All we knew was that the hammer killer probably chose their house at random. No one in my family mentioned to me the man I saw in our yard again. I asked my mother about it years later, and she tensed up. The hammer killer case went cold, and the neighborhood moved on as people do. I moved further south to a different side of Denver. I never forgot the man in my yard though, and I always felt like he might have been the same man who murdered that family. As years went by, more information came out and they linked the murder of the family to a vicious murderer in another neighborhood. He was a serial killer, and he was active in our community that whole time. Fast forward to 2019, 
and I'm watching the news. I can't believe it. They finally solved the cold case of that family's murder, as well as the other attacks. They flash the picture of the suspect across the screen, and my heart stops. It's him. It's the man I saw as a child. I have that face saved in my memory because he frightened me so badly. I said something about it to my brother, and he shrugged it off. I mentioned it to some friends, and they said that was creepy, but there was no way I could have remembered something like that. I thought they might be right, until the news also showed some photos of the suspect when he was younger and likely committed the murders. That is exactly the man I saw. I know it. Growing up, my brother T and I were adopted into a family of eight around the time I was four and T was six. I would say it was a fairly normal adoption, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The family that adopted us lived in the Pacific Northwest, and they had a property of around 70 acres with nothing but woods around. The cabin they built is quite literally in the middle of nowhere. You have to drive a considerable amount of time, 30 to 40 minutes, just to get to the nearest town. On this property, my family built several shop buildings to store wood for the coal seasons and to hold random equipment and machines. These buildings were spread all around the property. Some of them are even older than the cabin my father built, only held together by old rotting wood and rusted steel. They always seemed to give off ominous vibes. You could oftentimes feel something watching you if you ever went into them alone, and even with other people sometimes. I give all this context just to give you perspective on the size of this property and the feelings it gives off. This particular experience I wanted to share today started on a night in the late summer slash early fall. I was around 11 years old at the time. The evening was slowing down as I laid in the grass on the lawn outside of the cabin. Feeling a breeze pick up and observing the sunset, I decided it was time for me to head inside. I got inside and brushed my teeth. I then headed to my mom's room to say goodnight. After that, I went to my brother's room, T, to say goodnight as well. We joked around and talked for a little bit before I headed off to bed. As I was stepping outside to go down into the cellar where my room was, I couldn't help but feel like something was watching me. I quickly observed the deafening silence that accompanied this feeling. It was odd for the woods to be quiet at night, especially in the summer. You would expect to hear the crickets and croaking of frogs, but there was nothing. I noted this, and with great haste, I ran down to the cellar. I kicked open the cellar door that was made of solid oak slabs. It was the most efficient way of opening it because it didn't have a traditional doorknob. I ran inside my bedroom, slamming the door behind me with such a force that it shook my room. I hate when that happens, I said aloud to myself, referring to the feeling I was just forced to feel. Deciding to try to calm my nerves down a little. I started singing some goofy little tune, not knowing what was going to happen in a few moments. I took my shirt off to put on my nightshirt, and then hopped into bed where I thought I'd be safe from whatever was peering at me. As I was walking towards my bed, only two paces in front of me, there was a snapping pop in mid-air. <laughs> Taken aback, and quite frankly on the verge of crapping my pants, a figure appeared. Right in front of my eyes stood this being, pitch black like he was hiding out in a chimney his whole existence. His eyes were void of color or any human emotion or expression. I'm not quite sure how long him and I just stared at each other. It could have been two seconds or ten minutes, because it felt like a lifetime. The absolute terror as I looked into this thing's eyes ate me up. It was like staring at something you know could kill you in that second, but is choosing not to. Something with such emptiness that all that is there is just void. Feeling as though my soul was violated, I scrambled to run for the door. Grabbing the door handle, I swung the door open. As I was making my bolt out of the cellar and into the dark, I looked back and saw it staring at me, with those empty eyes. I ran with swiftness across the gravel on my bare feet until I got back to the door of the cabin. I ran inside to my brother T's room, sobbing and shaking uncontrollably. The first thing he said to me was, Did you see a ghost or something? But quickly came over to comfort me. He still says to this day, he's never seen me or anyone else look so horrified. After he was able to calm me down a little bit, we decided to go tell my parents. They were both super Christian, and my father to the point of being cult-like. I told them I saw a demon, 
and they saw how shook up I was, but quickly they both denied it, completely dismissing whatever I saw. They never brought it back up to me after that night. My parents were gracious enough to let me sleep in one of our guest rooms for the night, probably because I refused to sleep in my bedroom after that. Nothing more happened that evening, besides me tossing and turning, wondering what on earth just happened to me. This story starts a while back, when I just entered high school. I started school really early and skipped a lot of grades, so I entered at the age of 12. My school had a middle school and a primary school building linked right next to it. Since it was a private school, there weren't really that many students as it was really expensive. It wasn't that weird for me to hang out with grade 5 kids since we were practically almost the same age. There's this one particular girl I got along with really well. We shared the same preferences, and so we would hang out a lot. We would paint our nails in the library and talk about random shows we'd watch on Disney. On this particular day, she told me randomly that she had an imaginary friend. I brushed it off as her joking and just went along with it, making fun of her imaginary friend. I can't remember what it is I said exactly, but my friend looked at me scared and said, Lucy is not happy with you. I just laughed and dismissed it. I never thought of Lucy again until one night. I went to bed normally, without anything on my mind at all, and then I had this dream. This very realistic dream. I was laying in bed, the exact same position I'd laid in before dozing off. My sister was laying in her bed beside me, exactly as she was before I dozed off, but this time she was awake and looking scared. I was also scared. We were both looking at one door. The bathroom door. That's when I started to hear a lot of banging and attempts to open the door. This really freaked me out. Even though it was a dream, I can still remember how much I was shaking with fear. How real it felt. I got under the covers in my dream and started to pray, and then I woke up. I was still scared, obviously, waking up to the exact same scene as in my dream. But there was no banging, and I could see the shadow of someone in my room, just standing there. It was illuminated close to the door. I remember instantly thinking it was Lucy and everything my friend told me. I started to beg for forgiveness from Lucy. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do and eventually the shadow just left. Sometimes I hear movement behind the door or in my closet. I have no pets or anything that could make that sound, but it doesn't really spook me. Although as I started to grow, I stopped minding all these things and the thought of Lucy ever being real or the dream even meaning anything. Fast forward to a few years later, I'm a senior in college. One night, my mom and I were watching a movie in my room and we fell asleep. She frantically woke up and shook me awake, telling me something had bitten her on her feet. I tried to examine her feet or any sign of a bite, but I saw nothing. She then started to feel numb on the left side and told me it felt like paralysis. So I called my brothers and we took her straight to the doctors. After taking her vitals, the doctor said she was having a stroke due to hypertension. Now, this wasn't anything unusual as she had high blood pressure and was on meds. When we asked the doctors why she felt a snake bite on her feet, they had no explanation. All they said is that if she hadn't woke up, something bad would have happened. My mom told me a few months later that something tried to wake her up by touching her feet. She thought it was one of my little brothers and didn't mind. Then that's when she felt a snake bite that woke her up. My mom and I do believe in the paranormal, called jinns, and at first she told me that she believed it was probably a bad jinn that attacked her. But then we came to realize that whatever it is that tried to wake her up was probably trying to save her life. I don't know if this is all connected to Lucy, but I feel whatever it was that was in my room that scared me wasn't entirely evil. What do you think? <laughs>